Uh, I'm Gene Whaley. I am the ministry director of um, Operation In As Much, and I appreciate you having me here to Carson Newman University today. I've got to get used to saying that, because when I came here, it was just a college, so I'm old. Uh, I am that old guy. So um, I know what some of you are thinking. I thought In As Much, Operation In As Much was just something that Carson Newman did. Well, I thought the same thing when I first learned of In As Much, but actually, Operation In As Much is a, a nationwide, actually, it's a worldwide ministry. And we have been, over the 26-year history of Operation As Much, been in 26 states, five countries, over 2,200 churches have used this model of ministry to go out and share the love of Jesus around the community. So it's a, it's a way bigger thing than just Carson Newman, but I want you to know how big it is because tomorrow you get a chance to join in with the church, Big C, and going out and spreading the love of Jesus. So that's an amazing thing. Um, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'll do that first. Um, I, I'm just a local guy. I'm from Morristown, right down the road here. And um, I attended Carson Newman, like I said, a long time ago. Actually, at the end of this school year, I was just had to think about all this. It all hit me when I was thinking about what I wanted to say today. It'll be 20 years since I graduated from Carson Newman. So I'm that kind of old. So I, I, I know I don't look like it. Y'all can tell me that. I appreciate that. So, but 20 years. And um, I'm already that guy that says, like I said, Carson Newman used to be a college, not a university. So I'm also the guy, you know, I was here when alumni, when I, I, I lived in alumni, so guys lived in alumni dorm. You know, we didn't have Chick-fil-A on campus. Um, we didn't have a, a disc golf course around campus. Now we made up our own. Uh, we had our own Frisbee golf course. We started at alumni in the, in the, in the lawn there. And when, I think the first hole went across the street into Henderson Lawn and then went back over to the science building and went all the way around campus until we got back to alumni. So we had to create our own fund back in the day. Um, but I'm that kind of old, and it, and it happens fast. It happens fast. I want you guys to know that. So get ready for that. So, but fast forward 20 years, and I, and I hope you guys, you know, 20 years from now, maybe you'll feel as blessed as I am today, as I feel today. Uh, I do have a lovely and beautiful wife. We do have six kids. That's almost like a gazillion or whatever Jeremiah said. Six kids, and I, that's all on purpose, too. I know what you're already thinking about. I know what people think about me when they see me coming with these kids. So it was all on purpose. So that God, is, God has definitely blessed us. Um, but when I think back to my days at Carson Newman, I, I do look at these days as some of the best years of my life. The best four years of my life. Some are for you, it's five or six years. I know that. So, but the best four years of my life. And uh, it's, it's when God began to shape me and mold me into the young man that he wanted me to become at that time. See, I, um, I didn't travel very far away from home to go to school, but God used Carson Newman to open my eyes, open my eyes to the world, even my world around me that I was so naive to at the time. Um, really started giving me that direction for my life that I, I wasn't sure about at the time. See, I grew up in, let's just say, a less than ideal situation um, in life. I, dysfunction was kind of the world that I lived in. My family was full of divorce, broken relationships, um, single mother, uh, let's see, what else can I say? Poverty, uh, suicide, mental health issues, all those things happen right around me. So that's the world that I grew up in. Um, but, but eventually there was salvation and there was forgiveness and there was restoration. So God can do all those things. If that's your story today, um, God can do all those things and had, has done them for me. So I was saved at the age of 15 years old and just before I was a sophomore in high school and over the next few years, I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. So I, I just kind of developed this thought that I just want to work with people. You know, I, I learned really quickly in life that life comes down to relationships. No matter if you're a doctor, a nurse, working in retail, picking up trash, it doesn't matter. Life comes down to relationships. So I just, all I knew was I wanted to work with people, children, kids, just people. I wasn't sure. So I came to Carson Newman and I majored in Human services, makes sense, right? Sociology department. Actually minored in um, psychology. And honestly, I had a minor in intramural sports, if that can even be a thing. Uh, I spent my every waking hour that I wasn't in class playing video games or other things too, but uh, intramural sports. I think if anybody can beat my record, I had 13 shirts in one year. So y'all, that, that was how much I played intramural sports, FYI. Um, but I was a Bonner Scholar on campus too. And, that was such an important part. Anybody else Bonner Scholars in the house today? See some hands, some hands. Thank you. Yeah, it was, it was such an amazing growing part of my life. You know, my world was pretty small 
you know, I just described like a, a broad stroke of my testimony there, but uh, I didn't understand the world, didn't know the world. I got to travel to Washington, D.C. on a trip with Bonner Scholar through a leadership conference. We got to go up to Princeton, New Jersey and into, into New York City to see a Broadway show. And I just thought, you know, I'd seen it all at that point. Um, but that, but it was such a growing time for me, but ultimately because I got to meet real needs and serve through the Bonners program here in the community while getting part of my school paid for. So what, it, there's nothing better than that. So, um, but anyway, Carson Newman was just, again, part of my growing process, it expanded my world, and I, I would never give back those four years. And what I, what I really, what we're talking about today is this rooted in the gospel, was gospel rooted service. And I want to look through that lens as we talk about what you guys are gonna to get to do tomorrow, which is Operation In As Much. So the ministry of In As Much, it comes right out of Matthew 25. If you have your Bible or your phone, if you're not already playing a game or looking at something on Facebook right now, or you don't use Facebook, y'all are young, Instagram or Twitter, um, if you wanna follow along, Matthew 25, that's where we're gonna to be today. But right in Matthew 25, oh, Bible lesson for you. You'll never find, the, if, you're, if you're looking for the word in as much in the Bible, you're only gonna find it in the King James or the New King James. So that word is lost in translation today uh, and, and definitely in new biblical um, translations. But the, you can learn from context that in as much means to the extent of something that I do or whatever I do. In as much as what I do, I do the, you do this to the least of these, you did them for me. So actually a funny story about that. There was a church in Canada and uh, which is one of the countries that I say we've been to. Lady came down into Michigan. We were up in Michigan. This wasn't me before, before I was at In As Much. Uh, David, the founder of In As Much, was up in Michigan doing a training with some churches. And a lady came down from the Canada to the States. She was part of the training. She was going to take In As Much ministry back to her church in Canada and so they could start serving. And she, David got a call a few weeks later and she said, this word In As Much just doesn't make sense to Canadian people. And she said, we're calling our day Operation whatever and that's what they did they called it operation whatever and they went out and they served the community So that's a true story um, But there in Matthew 25 Jesus is talking and I'll just kind of give you a synopsis here He separating people out into two groups or two sides and we've got the the sheep on the right and the goats on the left And as we know from the from scripture Jesus is the great shepherd and so we're the sheep if you're a believer and so he's talking there in Matthew 25 and he says for I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Now, the people were confused at that point. They said, when did we do these things for you? Now, he goes on in Matthew 25, 40. And that, that's where the word in as much comes right out. It was pulled right out of that verse, our ministry is. It says, inasmuch as you've done these things for the least of these, you did them for me. And, that, and that's an important thing to understand is we're not just doing simple things every day, walking what I call compassion ministry, having compassion for others. We're doing these things for Jesus. And that's a commandment in the word. Um, a friend of mine just gave me a book called Drop the Stones by Carlos Rodriguez. And I've, I've read one, one chapter out of that book. That's all I've read so far, but it was a great chapter. And he talks about worship in that chapter. He says that one of the definitions of worship in the New Testament is to get close enough to kiss. Now that is a beautiful picture of worshiping God. To get close enough to kiss. That's how we should be walking out worship every day with the Lord. It's not about, it's not just singing like we just did. That is definitely worship. But it's how we walk out our, our, and flesh out our walk every day with the Lord. Walking close enough to kiss. We can worship the Lord that way. When we go out tomorrow or anytime you serve, you can touch Jesus, you can love Jesus, you can dress Jesus, you can feed Jesus, you can visit and care for Jesus, and definitely you can worship Jesus. So that's what we're talking about. We're not just talking about an opportunity to go rake some leaves. It's way more than that. Tomorrow, your, your school is providing an opportunity for you guys to go out and do these things and to touch and see Jesus right here in East Tennessee. And I think that's a beautiful thing. Like I said, you're not just picking up trash, you're painting a wall or whatever simplistic way you want to describe what you're about to go do tomorrow. It's way more than that. You are going to see Jesus tomorrow. And that is a mindset and that's the heartbeat that you need to carry with you. Anytime you go out and serve, you know, Jesus got down and, and washed feet. That is one of the grossest, nastiest things you could have done back in biblical times. I mean, it, it is something that it, it's a humble, it's a mindset and we're there to see Jesus. And so... But you know what? 
I just want to be real about that. There, there's a very realistic thing we need to talk about and be real about is that we're all human beings. We all fall. We all get up on the wrong side of the bed. We all wake up moody. We all have emotional highs and lows that we have to deal with. So does that not make what I just, all that I described that sounds really good, it makes it all really hard sometimes. I get that. Um, and then you add in society. You add in uh, media, social media. You add in uh, entertainment, things like that in our world. And at the click of a button, you can know what's going on all around the world. And that is a lot to carry on our shoulders. That is a lot of burden and a lot of things that we carry with us all the time. I don't, I, I'm convinced that we are not made to carry the world's burdens on our shoulders all the time. And I don't know if you felt that over the last couple of years. Well, I have. It has been a heavy draining last two years specifically. But it's only worse because we, in our modern society, we can, we can know all these things. And this is what happens when we carry all that with us all the time. We become desensitized. We become desensitized specifically to the needs right around us. We don't see those anymore. Because our, our instinct is to look inward and take care of ourselves. Instead of looking outward and showing compassion. That's the way to combat this. First of all, turn off the media, if you, if you can do that. Um, but secondly, stay compassionate to one another. Stay compassionate to one another. God is a God of compassion. And right now, more than ever, we need to, as believers, be showing God's compassion to others. There's, there's no other way to say that. And I want to say this, is that when the church, which in your case, the big C, the church, but in your case, the school, when we go out and we show compassion to others, some amazing things. It, it creates a huge impact in people's lives. More people are involved. More people are served in a day like we're going to do tomorrow. This is a huge impact on the church, the campus, and the community. And I, what I want to do is spend my last few minutes talking through what are some of the benefits of a day like tomorrow and an operation in as much day. First of all, and, I, and these are all things we've heard as a ministry from churches, but I'll kind of customize them to a campus life. Um, first of all, the campus is energized. As Jeremiah just said, your classes are canceled. Man, I never got that when I was in college. I'm kind of jealous about that. Um, classes are canceled. The whole campus is unified about one thing tomorrow, and that's service. And, we, and it can't help but create a buzz and an energy around campus. And so I hope that continues throughout your year and in your individual lives throughout your individual lives through the year. So, but I'll say this a few times maybe if I haven't said it already, but, and Jeremiah said it, but tomorrow is not about one day. If you go out tomorrow and you pat yourself on the back and you check the box, then you have missed the point. You have missed the point. And it sounds like there's a lot of opportunities with that text message, uh, I want to help, that you can do that throughout the year. But tomorrow's not about one day. There are many ways to serve around campus and around your community. And, I want, and so this is going to create a buzz to do that throughout the year. Second thing is, Volunteers, you guys, the students, create it, serving creates a passion. Volunteers discover a passion. I guess I should say that. As I mentioned before, I kind of discovered a lot of my passions as a student here. But what getting outside of your seat and outside of these pews or outside of your dorm room or out, out of your bed tomorrow morning does is it shows you that, hey, this isn't that bad. I can go do this more often. Sometimes you just need to do it once and you go, oh, that's, I can do that again. That's not scary. Um, but a lot of people realize how gifted they are in service when they actually go out and give it a shot. And so volunteers discover a passion. The third thing, and this is really obvious, it increases fellowship. You know, even Carson Newman being a small college, there's, if you look around the room, you don't know a lot of these students. You're going to get a chance to go out and serve with other students tomorrow that you don't know. You're going to create bonds and friendships, maybe even meet your spouse. Who knows, right? So we've got to put a spin on it somehow. But you're going to create friendships and the community is going to be uh, strengthen through what you're going to do tomorrow. So increase fellowship. Fourth thing is creates a greater awareness of local needs. I think that's important. Even in Jefferson City, little old Jefferson City, and even the surrounding area, there are hundreds and hundreds and even thousands of people that are in need, deep, deep need. And that's only gotten worse after the last couple of years. So you have an opportunity tomorrow to know what those things are more intimately. Uh, I think being on a campus, sometimes you feel like you're in a bubble, and I understand that, you, especially if you're not from here. You know, this is your world now, but the, the school providing a way tomorrow for you to get out of this bubble and go out is really important. 
I think it says a lot about the campus and about the heartbeat of the campus. And I'm so pleased that they're still trying to grow disciples today through this ministry. But this is a great opportunity for you. Many of your eyes are going to be opened to needs in the community more. I'll tell you a story about a church down in Florida. We were, David, I keep saying David. David Crocker is the founder of this ministry. I've been with the ministry a couple of years. So a lot of my stories are third hand. But David was in Florida doing a, a, a training with another church in Florida, just like I mentioned before. That's what we do. We do trainings and we teach churches models of ministry on how to serve effectively, just like this. So when I talk about training, that's what we're doing. We're trying to invigorate the people to get outside the church, and we do that church by church. But he was doing a training in Florida, and this guy stood up. It was a very affluent church. Like they, You can look around and see they didn't hurt for any, any material needs at all. They had everything they needed. The guy stood up and said, David, I don't... He got to the part in the training where they were talking about projects and what they were going to do and how they were going to serve. And they were brainstorming ideas and just kicking around things. And the guy stood up and said, I don't, I don't think we have any of those needs or any of those kind of people in our community. I, don't, I mean, I just don't think we do. And of course, David said, listen, I don't know your community like you know your community, but if you really look around, you're going to find those people. They are everywhere and they are, they are in your backyard, I promise. Well, sure enough, they were right there in their backyard. This guy just didn't have any awareness of that. They found a family in a mobile home park, and they have those other places in Tennessee, believe it or not. This mobile home park was in Florida, and um, he was, uh, the family was in it. Of course, you can imagine the the yard was grown up. There was things everywhere, very stereotypical, if you want to put stereotypes on this, a very stereotypical kind of situation. Stuff all over the yard, grass grown up, the house dilapidated. And actually, the county had gotten involved where they lived and started finding this family so much money every day. So over the course of a year, they already owed the county thousands of dollars because of the condition of their home. And there was no way to change that at this point. They were probably hopeless. And so, but the church got involved. Actually, a bunch of college students and teenagers went over. An army of people went over and blessed that family that day. And they took four dumpster fulls of trash and debris out of the yard, cleaned everything up. They actually went to the county on their behalf and asked them to forgive the money, which they did. They forgave everything but one day and the church paid that off for them. So... This guy in this church doesn't say that anymore. Now he knows right in his backyard there are needs all around him. And so that's what happens with a day like tomorrow. The fifth thing is it improves mission focus. Okay, maybe this doesn't apply to you guys as broke college students, but the best way or the the favorite way, not the best way, the favorite way for most adults to do missions is just to write a check and put that in the offering plate or drop it in the box or however these cool churches do it today. Um, write a check. So most people think, oh, that's somebody else's job. That's the pastor's job because they get paid to do that. That's what they do. Or they look across the pew to them or beside them and say, oh, they're really good at that. That's their thing. That's not my thing. So I'm just going to write a check. But I promise you, everybody has a thing. Everybody has skills and talents and spiritual gifts that you're supposed to be using. You're supposed to be using those things. And so we're called to do that thing, whatever that thing is. So a day like tomorrow, a day like an in as much day, allows everybody to have um, a new uh, focus on missions. It brings missions back to you, right into your backyard. We're not talking about a mission trip to the coast to do hurricane relief or some trip to Asia. You should do those things. Churches should do those things. Christians should do those things. But this brings missions right here into your community. And I think that's a beautiful thing. Now, you'll notice the first five things. I had even talked about the community yet. Those were all things that happened in the church, inside of us. Isn't that amazing? So, and then we forget that we're actually going out to serve somebody else all of a sudden. So, this is what it does out in the community. First of all, you, help, you can help community agencies through a day like tomorrow. There's a lot of community agencies out in your communities where you live and specifically here, since we're talking about here, that are already doing amazing work. They're already doing the work that needs to be done. And so you don't have to create a new ministry. You don't have to create a new nonprofit to go out and serve somebody. They're already taking that burden off. So you can just walk hand in hand with them and go serve. Our church, Manly Baptist, just did a, an in as much day a couple weeks ago. And we had 365 people out in the community serving. It was a great day. And one of the projects was that's a place called the Tapestry House in Morristown. And this is a transitional home for women that are coming out of incarceration. And so on that day, you know, they, they painted doors, they hung doors, they sanded floors, they, the lady sat there all day and just scrubbed the polished handles off the, I mean, that's what she did all day long. So you think, well, how, you know, that's, 
that's simple, that's easy, what's whatever. But the reality is this is what they did. They are paving a way for some women, some women or woman's life to change. That's what they're doing. So don't think of it so simplistic, simplistically. We'll say it that way. They were making it possible for hundreds of women, hopefully, in the Morstan area, for life to God. God is a lot. God wants to change lives and restore lives. And so, when you go out tomorrow, you're doing just that. That's what mainly got to do on that day. They weren't just hanging doors. They were beginning the process for some women's some woman's life to be restored. And so that's a beautiful thing. Number seven, it provides hope to broken people. I think that's very, very important. Today, I think more than ever, what the world needs is hope. And every chance we get, we, and we give hope to somebody else, that builds more hope. Hope builds more hope. And so it's not just that we're trying to do something good. We're not trying to pat ourselves on the back. We're not the Boy Scouts, okay? We're the church. And we're doing this in Jesus' name. We're providing hope in Jesus. And so that's one thing that we get to do. And then the last thing I'll say is this opened doors to the Gospels. This is a Gospel-focused uh, message, service, evangelistic service, compassion ministry. It's all pointed toward evangelism. And tomorrow, one of you in this room, maybe multiple, hopefully multiple, are going to get a chance to share your story with somebody tomorrow. Step up and do that. You know, you might not feel comfortable sharing like some gospel presentation, but you can always share your story of how God changed your life. Nobody can take your story away from you. And so that's important to know. Somebody's going to say, why are you doing this? I mean, they don't understand why you would come out and do something free or cool for them. And then you can, you can say, well, Carson Newman just made me do it or I get credit in this class. You can say all those things. Maybe they didn't make you do it. Maybe you're just doing it. Hopefully you're just doing it. But you can also say it's because Jesus loves you. And let me tell you what he did in my life. So it's an opportunity to share the gospel. So um, as I close, I just want to say at the end of the day, you know, this is not about Operation In as much. It's not about Carson Newman College. It's not even not about you. It's about building the kingdom, sharing the gospel. And if tomorrow this ministry was gone, the commandment to still go out and serve is still there. That's never going to be erased from God's book. So we're commanded to do these things. And it's simply about obedience. So what, what Carson is actually teaching you guys to do and helping you do is to obey. And I think it's, that is a beautiful thing. So I really appreciate you guys having me this morning. I told you I was going to get you out early. I have no idea how long I've been talking. And I, t I was told I could just... I could just dismiss you. So let me pray. And then after I pray, you're actually dismissed. So tomorrow I'm excited. Go out and be the hands and feet in Jesus. And I'll be praying for you as you do that. So let's pray. God, we love you so much. We thank you, Father, for your love for us, for your dying on the cross, rising again, Father, that so we can have life. And tomorrow I pray that we can go out and share our story, share that life with somebody in the community, whether it's through working with kids, whether it's through raking a yard or whether it's through painting a wall. It doesn't matter what it is, Father. For us to get outside ourselves, humble ourselves, focus on somebody outside of ourselves just for a moment and tell them that you love them. So we pray for an amazing day tomorrow for this campus. We pray for every student that's going out and setting foot, even doing projects around campus or in the community. Father, you'll just bless their life, that you'll help them be blessed through their day of service and that you'll bless this campus for providing this opportunity. Thank you so much, Father, for your love for us. And we just give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name, we can pray. Amen.